evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be in the world. Welcome to day 11 of 52 Beers to a Man. I am Biffy Blake, the world's biggest sports fan, and with me, as always, on our daily quest through the 2020 World Cup is the umpire strikes back himself, Cricket Victoria's own Brath Rao. Hey, mate, how are you traveling? Very good, Biffy. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I had a late night last night. I was doing my own media commitments, so uh, <laughs> I didn't really get to see too much of the game. So you're going to have to take me through them. Yeah, a couple of games yesterday. West Indies, South Africa, New Zealand, Pakistan. Firstly, I got both of them wrong again with the predictions. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll come good one of these days, that's for sure. Let's hope so. Uh, <laughs> well, that first game, West Indies 143 for eight. Uh, South Africa knocked him off with 10 balls to go. Another good knock from Aidan Markram. Yeah, it was brilliant. But it, there are a couple of things that are not on there in the score card you put up, which took precedence over everything that happened. One was Quinton de Kock not playing the game, for ref refusing to take the knee. Which well, was we can't say that at the moment. He just didn't want to play for personal reasons, is the official line. I think he came out and said that he didn't want to do it, but he had yeah. the reasons for not doing it, which he'll get into shortly. The other one was Lendl Simmons. His innings was the difference, I reckon, between West Indies winning and losing. Made 16 of 35 balls. 16 <laughs> of 35. There's loads of tweets about he should have been wearing whites. Lendl Simmons has just played a great uh, test match innings. Look, I don't know what you're doing if you're opening the batting and going at less than uh, less than a, a run every two balls. I mean, that is not right. I mean, if you're struggling, you've just got to go for it and uh, either get out or hit some big balls. Yeah, it reminded me of this IPL innings by a bloke by the name Rahul Tewatia who he struggled. It was a tale of two halves. He struggled and then he came good. And it was, in the end, it was so beautiful. He won them the game. Right. Good to watch. But uh, the second half needs to come off as well. If you've taken up 35 balls, you better be getting a 75 or 100 <laughs> by the end of yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I, I didn't see game. the chase. Did they? Did the save ever do it easy? Or was it a bit of a struggle and they had to catch up? No, nah, they were always in control. They had too much firepower going on. Right. Markram was there, Enrich Kultz, and then uh, you had uh, people like David Miller and so on still waiting in the wings. Yeah, well, if they've only lost two wickets, I I'm guessing yeah. they did it quite easy. I'm not sure how they came to the conclusion of Enrich Naughty 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 being man of the match, considering Dwayne Pretorius took three wickets uh, and Maharaj quite an yeah. two for 24 off his four. It was the first spell, I would say, four for 14. Keeping it economical didn't let them run away with the game. Look, it's good. For 14 runs in a T20, you take it all the time over yeah. someone who gets belted for 40 and takes three wickets. I'd rather have the 14 for one. Uh, moving on to the late game, New Zealand, 134 for eight, batting first. Pakistan got them with only eight balls to spare. I did see a few of the highlights. Uh, Pakistan got behind the clock, and it wasn't really until... Asif came in and banged two consecutive sixes that they were comfortable, Pakistan. Yeah, Asif Ali, and he had the calming influence of sure Malika Dadaran as well. Vast amount of experience, even though they fell behind a little bit. For me, it felt like Pakistan were always going to win the game. Once they got them for 134, I, I couldn't see the Kiwis winning from there on in. Did you see what? some of the two that came out? Oh, it was mainly to do with the bet not running away and where was security. That was the 99% of the tweets I read today. <laughs> yes. Ramiz Raja's prophecy is almost coming through. He said that it's, it's going to take aim at India, England and New Zealand. <laughs> it's ticked off India and New Zealand. It's England who's remaining now. <laughs> it's quite interesting, Pakistan. They're kind of bucking the trend of this World Cup because their bowling firepower is the two seamers, Ralph and Shaheen Afrid, they are the spearhead, whereas near enough every other team, probably uh, New Zealand aside, they're all yep. spin-based, whereas these guys are sheer firepower as well. They've got Hafiz to bowling uh, seam up. So, yeah, Pakistan are going to try and blast their way through the opposition in terms of bowling instead of relying on the spinners. It's a good strategy. If you have express pace, why, why not use it? We'll see a bit of it from Australia as well when they... Yeah. Well, I see Harris, Harris Ralph 
He got a wicket with a delivery at 153 kilometers an hour, which I think is the 10th fastest wicket taking delivery in 2020 internationals. So there's a bit of a stat for you. Yeah. He's a very clever bowler. He's gone the pace direction this way. When he played against India, he started off bowling quick and then he started to take the pace off and made it really difficult. He was bowling 120s, 130s, 110s. Made it hard. I did hear Danny Morrison say, Harris Rafe, I know he was playing club cricket in Tasmania and then he got called into the Hurricanes to play Big Bash when they got an injury. He only started playing hardball cricket three years ago. He was playing softball uh, cricket up until three years ago. Yeah, hadn't even hadn't even played hardball cricket until trying to get a bit of experience in Tasmania. So just an amazing rise to the top, considering this is a guy bowling ninety plus miles an hour quite regularly. Yes, Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah, I that shocked me as well. I had a quick look to check whether Danny Morrison was right, and yeah, apparently he is. Now here you go, mate. Here's some of my fast facts that I've picked up in the past 24 hours. So we've had seven games in the Super 12s so far. Six out of the seven games have been won by the chasing team. Obviously, the one that didn't happen was Scotland, who got bowled out for 60. All seven games so far have been won by the team that have won the toss. So seven out of seven. Um, England are playing Bangladesh tonight. This is the first time that England are going to play Bangladesh in a 2020. That's n- never happened. How long have we been playing international 2020s for? It's, they have never played Bangladesh. And then Tim Southey last night got Babar Azam out. That was his 100th 2020 international wicket. And he moves. Oh, he was already in third place all time. Shakib Al Hassan, 117. And Lasith Malinga, 107. May well move into second place during this tournament, considering he's probably got another four games to play. And just for. Balance his 100th one day international wicket was Virat Kohli. So uh, he knocks off the best when he gets his 100th yeah, wicket in bad. Not bad various easy. forms. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's mm. fantastic. We've spoken about it a fair bit during this podcast that win the toss, win the game sort of approach. And well, that's true now. Seven out so of far. seven. That's a, an unbelievable stat. I couldn't believe it today uh, when I was going through and saw that. It's crazy. Hat wearing league. Mamadullah, he's still number one. There wasn't any efforts, even from Bavuma last night. He, uh, I think he was still on three at certain stages. So nobody is challenging Mamadullah. But tonight could be the night. Owen Morgan, I'm putting money on <laughs> five hats at some stage. So we're going to have to keep our eyes on that. Here are some of the plays of the day from last night's games. This is right off the top shelf. Go, go, go. Oh, my goodness me. I think he's in trouble here. Those direct hits are so often out. He was always pedaling and not necessarily pedaling fast enough. Oh, he's gone big. What a crunching blow that is. Oh, that's over the stands. Pakazaman, let's rip. You just got to be very sure where you land that ball in front of a left-hander. Up and over. Is there a chance? Conway! Oh, put a cape on him as well! Devon Conway, that is going to be in the vault locker for sure. This is right off the top shelf. Yeah, great catch, Devon Conway. Well, the one thing that stands out in this World Cup so far is the catching. It has been absolutely phenomenal. Conway's up there. Markram was there. Uh, the guy from Papua New Guinea, the keeper from Afghanistan as well. Some great catching and some great runouts. Plays of the day. Kane Williamson's run out last night didn't even make the top three. No, it's... Um... Except for Bangladesh, I think most teams have been pretty spot on with their fielding and so on. Oh, just, don't say Bangladesh, just say Lytton Das. <laughs> no, no, it'll be interesting to see if he plays tonight. <laughs> I think he probably will. I mean, he's, he's a half decent bat and he's up there at the top. But uh, yeah, I mean, he has had a nightmare in the field. In fact, probably cost him the game. Some great catching so far. I've been very, very impressed with the fielding in uh, this tournament. It's been brilliant. Uh, moving on to the 
groups. England are still top after their big win against the West Indies. Um, their match against Bangladesh. Look, probably if they win tonight, they will then be essentially assured of getting through to the semis, although they've only played fifth and sixth in the group so far. After Pakistan winning last night, they are now virtually assured of semi-finals because they've only got Afghanistan, Scotland and Namibia to play in that group. So Pakistan are basically already through. Be interesting to see the game against Afghanistan. I was thinking about this earlier today. Would Pakistan throw a game against Afghanistan because it would basically mean India and New Zealand being eliminated if Afghanistan win? Just think about that for a minute. <laughs> yeah, probably not because if it was played in a different country, if it was in England, Australia hosting the tournament or one of those countries, I would say they might. But Af- Afghanistan are just as dangerous on those wickets. True. Just yeah. keep that in the back of your mind when Pakistan play Afghanistan. <laughs> Seeing how the games pan out, that yeah. to me is a possibility. If they could eliminate India by losing to Afghanistan. They might do that, but I don't they, know whether they would do that for New Zealand. <laughs> I'm a conspiracy theorist of all. I really am. Um, moving into the fixtures, that's how the groups line up. There's the fixtures. We'll talk about the upcoming fixtures a bit later. Tonight's games England $1.20 to beat Bangladesh, $4.50. Scotland are favourites over Namibia, $2.25. That could be a decent upset. Namibia, well, we all know they're a two man team, but you know, if those two come off, I know, I don't know whether I mentioned this on yesterday's podcast. Um, I know Scotland were having emergency training yesterday afternoon because they were humiliated, fair to say, by Afghanistan. So they called an emergency meeting for yesterday morning in the UAE, and then they had an emergency training session yesterday afternoon to get some more practice in before this game. Hopefully, David David Visa, Piki of France, and Trumpelman. Trumpelman. Big guy. (laughs) That's right. A bit of movement in the group winners betting. England is dollar sixty seven to win group one. Australia have come into three dollars sixty. West Indies, all of a sudden, it's all over. Thirty four dollars to win that group. After last night's game in group two, Pakistan are now a dollar oh four favourite. The bookies don't think anyone else can win that group. India eleven dollars. New Zealand seventeen dollars. Afghanistan and nineteen dollars to win the group. Now top. Run scorer in the tournament, Babar Azam, $7. Kohli still $8. Rizwan, $10. Um, top tournament, we could take a Shakib Halasan, $4.33. And Rashid Khan has come into $10. I think Adil Rashid, probably after tonight, may well yep. shorten in between Shakib and Rashid. I think you'll probably get two or three tonight, and we'll end up about 5 or $6 just after tonight. Outright tournament winners. Now there has been movement in the tournament odds. Pakistan are now the favourites to win the whole thing. $3.30. India have drifted out to $3.75. A bit closer to England. West Indies, nobody thinks they can win. They were $6.50 to defend their title. They're now $51. And that, if you put money on that, you are just giving money to the bookies because it ain't going to happen. Um, South Africa, after being, I think they were $9 to win the whole thing at one stage, they drifted out to $21 after losing to Australia. After last night's win, they're now back into 13 So that's how fickle this market is. Everyone else is a lottery. Our boys, Afghanistan, to cause an upset, are still $31. Now, we've had some fun doing some, uh, some of the funny stuff, some of the musical stuff that's been released by the teams. One country we haven't covered, and they're playing Bangladesh tonight. This was a promo that Sky Sports put out for England. I think it was for the Ashes a few years ago, but uh, yeah, quite funny. So it's England's turn on 52 beers to a man. What are you laughing at? Donald Bradman, Peter May, 
at the Oval final day. Little Earn, Mark Firm, Walter Allen, at the Gather, Reed Chibino. At the slips on 99. Jones is dying. Gower flying in the sky. One is ball in 93. Freddie makes the bales fly. It was always burning since the world returned. We didn't start the fire. Don't be fearing matter, but we're trying to fight it. 10, 11, white wash. NASA and that time. Are we going to have a ball? Brigadier Block. Headingly. 81. Mark Wall. Steve Wall. Ozzy's got a winning team. Davy Warner. John Snow, final test, Manchester. Yes, Chef. Fumble smacked in that place. We did start the fire. The crowd goes ballistic. Patrick, he's done it from Australia. Why, Bill? We did start the fire. Only first job, what a nut. Renaud McGrath is a master. We didn't start the fire. The Ashes preview from a few years ago, quite fun stuff there, even Warney getting involved. Right, tonight's games, Bangladesh and England. Who you got in there? Can Bangladesh cause an upset? They can, but I don't think they will. You go in England and, and, Scotland. and Scotland. I genuinely think that Namibia may win this one. After being humiliated, bowled out for 60, I think Namibia may just have the upper hand. They're coming off a high after qualifying for the first time ever. I just think they might have enough. I really do. So uh, we shall wait and see on that one. Uh, anything else you're looking out for, Barath? At this stage, uh, I'm keeping my eye out on tomorrow's game, actually. The Australia-Sri Lanka one. That's why I'm keen to see how Australia go from here on in. Yeah. They're one of the floating teams. They've obviously only played one mm. game, and they only just snuck past South Africa, really. And, uh, yeah, you're mm. right. It's a work in progress for Australia, and they've got an interesting makeup of their side. A few young uns and a few old uns. And a lot of all-rounders make up their team. So, uh, yeah, it could come off. It, uh, Yeah, they may cause a few issues in Group 1. All righty. Well, happy viewing of the matches tonight. We will be back tomorrow on 52 Beers to Oman. I was going to say same time, same place, but uh, definitely the same place. May not be the same time. All right, mate. We will be back tomorrow at some stage. I'll see you then. See you, Beefy. Bye. All right, mate. Have a good night. You too.